Being an outlaw can seem fun and exciting. Living out in the wild, always running away from the authorities, getting up to all kinds of scallywaggery and stealing absolutely everything that you see. But it is a very difficult and dangerous life. But when it comes to trolling rich people, it's all worth it in the end. And today's outlaw is a very famous Scottish folk hero, so this one is a little bit close to my heart. Rob Roy. Please leave a like and a comment on this video because it really helps me in the algorithm. But before we get started, this video is brought to you by Display. With millions of officially licensed artworks to choose from, including your favourite movies, games and sports, Displate has a high quality metal print for everyone, with many franchises covered, including several of my personal favourites like Alien, Dark Souls and Cowboy Bebop. With Displate, starting a wall of high quality art of the things you're a fan of is extremely easy. And mounting your display couldn't be easier, all you have to do is stick the magnet to the wall and then slap that bad boy on there. And if you need more inspiration to get you started, you can check out some of my other favourite disc plates by clicking my link down in the description. If you click my link, you won't only be supporting my channel, but you will also get an automatic discount of 23% off of 1 to 2 disc plates, or 33% off of 3 or more disc plates. You will also be helping the planet by planting a tree for every disc plate that you buy. This offer is only available for a limited time, so make sure you get in there fast. Robert Roy McGregor doesn't have a birth date because in the 1600s that kind of information just really wasn't recorded for lowborn people. But what was recorded was the 7th of March 1671, which was the date of his baptism. We do know that he spent his early life in Glengyle at the head of Loch Catrin, Perthshire, in Scotland. From an early age, Robert was simply known as Rob Rua, or Red Rob, due to his dark red curly hair. During the era of Rob Roy, there was a bit of a divide between the north and south of Scotland. Many people living in the Scottish lowlands looked down on the Highlanders, since they spoke Scottish Gaelic and wore kilts, unlike the highbrow lowlanders who were walking around wearing actual dresses with powdered wigs. The lowlands also had a lot of infrastructure with cities and roads, whereas the people of the highlands used the same natural routes as their ancestors. The people in the lowlands also believed themselves to be more trustworthy and fair in their dealings, but believed that the northern Scots were thieves, beggars and opportunists. Of course, the reality is that both sides had a good share of all of the above with some of the richest people in the lowlands being the biggest thieves out there. Rob's parents were Donald Glass McGregor and Margaret Campbell, a well-known couple since Rob's father was the chieftain of Clan Gregor. But Rob would never inherit the title himself since he was the second-born son. His father Donald also held the title of Lieutenant Colonel for serving in King Charles II's army and he was extremely loyal to the Royal House of Stuart, as many of us still are. But anyway, he made sure to instill that exact same loyalty into his son Rob. Being the son of a chieftain did come with a few perks. As a boy, Rob was educated, which was something only the privileged kids could get at the time. Records of Rob's education were another thing that just wasn't really kept during this era. However, people in the modern day know that he was well educated through letters that were collected at different times in his life, which were all written by him. And back then, even just being able to write meant that you were well educated. Despite being educated, however, People in the lowlands never treated Rob as such, and they looked down on him. Because it doesn't matter how educated he was, 
he was still a Highlander. And he wasn't just any Highlander, he was a McGregor. So, Rob was seen as one of the wild McGregors, which is something that the Lowlanders would call them. They would also be accused of being cattle rustlers and brigands. Which, it's only half true. On the 27th of July, 1689, at the age of only 18, Rob Roy joined his father in the Battle of Killicranke, where he saw many of his friends, family and people he had known since he was born brutally killed. He and his father only just managed to escape the battle with their lives. Both Rob and his father had both been changed by the conflict, but Donald more so, and after the revolution, Rob's father was held in prison for two years with a broken spirit. And, as if things couldn't get any worse for him, his wife Margaret died while he was detained, which completely destroyed him mentally. All of his willpower and fighting spirit was buried along with her, which in turn affected his health overall, something which Rob would not forget. In order to survive, Rob became a reaver, which was a collector of stray highland cattle. Though the definition of stray was malleable, to say the least. After collecting the cattle, he would drive them to be sold at border markets. And with a silver tongue, Rob made a profit almost every time. Sometimes, however, things didn't always work out as planned. Sometimes, people would try to rip him off or rob him and steal his cattle. In a fight, however, Rob was extremely skilled at using a broadsword, and some said that he had very long arms and a higher-than-average upper body strength, which was likely obtained due to his grueling job. However, grabbing the odd stray cow wasn't exactly very lucrative, so Rob Roy decided to up his game. In 1691, Rob organised a raid on Kippen because he had heard that a large cattle drive was supposed to be coming through the town. The owners of the cattle were mostly Whigs who were parliamentary supremacists, which meant that no one would really care what happened to them. If there was witnesses, they would probably cheer instead of snitch. Rob and his men went into the village and set up ambushes in the surrounding hills. But the local herders were extremely on edge after seeing Rob Roy and his merry band of brigands camping out in the hills, and they knew that something was about to go down. But they didn't know that their own cows would be completely fine, because they didn't know that the real target was the huge cattle drive that was about to come into town. And this ended up causing a huge problem. Because when Rob and his men sprung the ambush to capture the herd because of the misunderstanding with the local herders, the local herders had actually called in reinforcements from another town to help defend the village, since they thought their own cows were the target. So, because of this confusion, Rob and his men now had a huge fight on their hands against men that they weren't planning on fighting, along with the Whigs they were originally ambushing. Despite this, Rob came out of this battle victorious, and now not only was in possession of the actual herd he had come to steal, but since all of the local herders had fled the battle, Rob took all of their cows as well. That wasn't part of the plan, but hey-ho, might as well. This is one of those stories where Rob Roy would definitely be seen in a bad light, even if it was a misunderstanding. He had no intention whatsoever of stealing from the local herdsmen, but because they attacked him, he did. As a result, the beginning of his criminal career started off with everyone hating him. In January of 1693, at the age of 22, Rob married Mary Helen McGregor of Dune, Persia. And in that same year, using the name McGregor was made illegal by the Crown, due to the fact that Clan McGregor were Jacobites and they had gained a reputation of being wild and refusing to bend the knee. Though this may just be because they were Highlanders and looked down upon. Also, yeah, that was a thing that could happen. The Crown could just 
ban your last name. This meant that Rob had to use his mother's surname, Campbell, which is a rather unfortunate surname to have, and if you want to know why, then you should go and watch my Glencoe Massacre video. But Rob Roy's use of the name was confirmed by the signature on many of his letters, which were all signed Rob Campbell. On top of that, the Crown didn't want Clan Gregor having weapons or gathering in groups of over four people. At this time, Rob had been working for a powerful man named James Graham, who was the first Duke of Montrose for a good number of years. Rob worked for him long enough to gain his trust and even form a good business-slash-friendship with him. This would not last, however, as we will get into soon. But either way, during this time, the Duke had many of the restrictions on the MacGregors lifted, probably as a gesture of goodwill considering the work that Rob Roy had done for him. Every year, Rob Roy would drive his cattle to market, but he would also take other Highlanders' cattle with his own to be sold for a fee when he returned home. On top of this, because cattle owners in the lowlands kept having animals go missing, usually from theft, it was Rob's job to watch over and protect them from anyone who would come and steal them. Although, Rob did steal some himself. But this was usually because he didn't know the cattle had an owner and he thought it was a stray, or he did know the cattle had an owner, but he hated the owner. At this time, it was pretty dangerous to be a cattle farmer and drover, since people would raid farms and steal whatever they could, but Rob, being a very skilled swordsman, was really good at his job, and every year he became more and more wealthy and successful. He owned a fair amount of land on Loch Lomond's side and at Balkahida. And he had become so good at cattle driving and dealing that he had developed a trust with very many people, including the rich, who at this time could have had your head for so much as looking at them wrong. Rob had also developed a sense that nothing could go wrong, since he was excelling in every aspect and had done so for years now. So, in 1711, he began taking job orders for much more money than normal. This money he was given was a debt. A debt that Rob would have until he completed his journey and fulfilled his order. In 1712, however, Rob Roy messed up big time and lost a lot of cattle. And he also had most of his own money stolen by one of his most trusted men. After searching for the thief, he was nowhere to be found, and this meant that Rob Roy now owed his creditors massive amounts of money. Even in those days, however, you wouldn't have just been instantly thrown in jail, especially if you had been in such good standing for many years. Just like in the modern day, if the terms were accepted, you could set up a payment plan to pay back your debt. In fact, it was likely a lot better than the modern day since you wouldn't be getting shafted with so much interest. There would still be a little bit of a blot on your record, but so long as it was paid on time, that would eventually become irrelevant. Rob Roy, however, owed a lot of money. A lot. And if he wanted, he could have just shrugged off the debt if it was owed to just some random farmer. But it wasn't owed to just some random farmer. It was owed to his boss, James Graham, first Duke of Montrose. And Rob Roy now owed him £30,000, which back then is an absolutely insane amount of money. And, as we mentioned before, James Graham was a very rich and powerful man that owned a lot of land in the lowlands, including the south of Loch Lomond, as well as townhouses in both London and Glasgow. He was also very politically powerful and was in huge favour of the Union. Normally, like I mentioned earlier, Rob would have established a deal to pay back what he owed to the Duke of Montrose. But the Duke had been humiliated by Rob's fuck-up, so a simple payment plan just wouldn't cut it. Originally, Rob said that he would do justice to his creditors and pay all of them back. But... Rob Roy was summoned to court to discuss this issue. And he refused to go. And since he refused his summons to court, the court declared him an outlaw. And for that, 
Rob Roy kind of changed his mind. He went, yeah, you know what, that Duke guy, yeah, fuck him. Fuck him. I'm not giving him his fucking money. I'm not giving him a fucking penny. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Rob was even quoted as saying, what came upon me was partly designed by others. But he also said that he would, and I quote, get a grip of them. Especially if they stayed living in Scotland as, and I quote, all the Highlands has such a kindness for me in general that they will assist me. Since he was now an outlaw, Rob Roy had to stay under the protection of the Campbells since his mother was originally a Campbell. Because being an outlaw doesn't just mean you're a wanted man. It means you are outside of the law. The protection of law now no longer applies to you. That means that people could walk up to him and assault him, they could mug him, they could steal all his stuff. Shit, a guy could walk up to him and stab Rob Roy 47 times just for a laugh and they wouldn't be charged with murder because the man they killed does not have protection under the law. He is an outlaw. But Rob Roy didn't just sit quietly and wallow in the fact that he had been made an outlaw. He just carried on as normal and instead politically played the Duke of Montrose off against two other dukes, namely the Duke of Argyle and the Duke of Athol. So they were all too busy squabbling and fighting with each other to have any time to arrest and imprison Rob Roy. But Rob Roy wasn't completely ignored, however. In one instance, he narrowly escaped near imprisonment by the Duke of Athol after finding out that the Duke of Montrose had sent men to take ownership of Rob Roy's lands because outlaws were not allowed to own land. So, in response, Rob travelled south to the Duke of Montrose's castle and stole 30 of his prized cattle. The Duke of Montrose, upon returning home after seizing Rob Roy's lands, asked his men, where the fuck have all my cows gone? Men were then sent to follow and capture Rob Roy as he travelled back to the Highlands, which meant Rob Roy couldn't find a place to stay for the night and he and his men had to sleep out in the hills. Then Rob Roy did something unusual. Rob had just robbed the Duke's castle. He was on the run, and the Duke and his men were hot on his heels. So Rob went back to the Duke's castle and robbed it again. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure, why, why the fuck not? This time, Rob stole a lot of wheat, but to be nice, he did leave a receipt behind for the Duke to find later. Then ensued very many cat and mouse chases such as this throughout the feud between Rob Roy and the Duke of Montrose. The Duke constantly tried to ruin Rob Roy's honour and Rob Roy in return hurt the Duke's ego and his pride. Rob was usually the one that came out on top, however, and he always had the last laugh. In letters by the Duke, it shows that he was so angry at Rob that he would never just write his name. He would always write his name as the villain Rob. It wasn't just cattle and grain that Rob stole from the Duke of Montrose. The thing he stole that hurt the Duke the most was the rent money from his tenants. Back in the day, you had someone called a factor and a factor's job would be to collect rent money and other debts on behalf of the Duke. So, Rob Roy kidnapped the Duke's factor, a man called Graham of Killern, and Rob Roy held him hostage for a whole week on an island, which, because of this incident, is now called Factor Island. <laughs> Rob Roy then forced the factor to write out a lot of proof of payment receipts, and then Rob Roy did the factor's job. He went around collecting all of the rent money from all of the tenants and giving them all their proof of payment receipts. But of course, instead of then passing the money along to the Duke, Rob just kept it. Then when it came time to actually collect the rent, the renters had no money to give because they already paid their rent. Oh, that's terrible. Now they're all going to get kicked out of their homes. No, they're not. There is a reason why Rob Roy forced the factor to write out all of those proof of payment receipts. 
Those receipts are legally recognised documents bearing the Duke's own official sigil and signed by the Duke's own factor. They paid the money and got an official receipt. Don't like it? Then be more careful with your receipts. None of the residents had to pay again, because legally they didn't have to. I did pay. I have the receipt right here. The Duke was absolutely fucking furious. But the factor was released unharmed. Rob couldn't stay on court forever. And in 1717, he was finally imprisoned by the Duke of Atho for fraudulent bankruptcy. But Rob then managed to escape, which was likely because of interference by the Duke of Argyll. But Rob only got a small taste of freedom before he was caught and imprisoned again. During his imprisonment in 1723, a book was published called The Highland Rogue, which was about Rob Roy's life, though it did mostly mythologise and exaggerate a lot of his achievements. But years later, in 1727, Rob Roy was due to be transported to Barbados to become an indentured servant. But, luckily for him, he received a pardon from King George I, and some believe that the book, The Highland Rogue, may have been part of the reason for his pardon. So Rob Roy was now free again, but his ordeal had worn him down a lot, and the fact that he was now well into his 50s didn't really help. So at this point, Rob Roy decided that he was now going to live as a law-abiding, peaceful man for the remainder of his life. And that is exactly what he did. He settled down on his farm in Inverlochlarig and Balkehida and eventually died quietly in his house on the 28th of December 1734 at the age of 63. The foundations of his house are still there and you can go and see them for yourself and you can also visit the gravesite of Rob Roy and his wife and son. Rob Roy since then has become mythologised in Scottish culture and a lot of people remember his story very fondly. There was also a movie released about his life in 1995 which was extremely loosely uh, based on the events of Rob Roy's life. I mean, it's, it's an okay movie but the only problem is that a lot of the stories are changed or fabricated or absolutely didn't happen. There's even a main character that was just completely made up I don't know what it is with Hollywood and Scottish history, but they just they just never get it right, do they? I mean, I'd recommend you still give it a little bit of a watch, but just uh, don't, don't expect too much accuracy. Rob Roy is still a very divisive character to this day. Some people think of him as a folk hero, while others see him as just a common criminal. But he's still a very much talked about and referenced character in Scottish history. There's also a walk that you can go on called the Rob Roy Way, where it's thought to be the path that he took his cattle down when he was travelling to the market. Cattle that he stole. It's Count Dankula on YouTube! Everybody subscribe!